Well, I'm going to tell you a story that I don't tell often, not because it's awkward or I just don't think about it often. I should, I guess. But back in the early 90s, I, um, I was ministering in a church in Spokane. I was doing a class for them. It wasn't the entire church. It was a group of probably 50 or so young adults. They had a master's commission. and They allowed others to come and, and join the teaching. So it wasn't a large group. But I was teaching on prayer, intercessory prayer. And it's the first time anything like this had ever happened to me. As I was speaking to them, suddenly I was not seeing them, though my eyes were open still. I was seeing a vision. And I've had, I guess, what, what I would, I had had what I would call visions, you know, but to me it was usually just when I would be deep in prayer with my eyes closed, and then, then God would bring a picture or, a vision to me, but I had never had anything like this happen where with my eyes wide open suddenly I was seeing in the spirit not the natural. And they could tell something strange was happening to me because I just stopped. I mean I was completely disoriented. And uh, what I saw was a large stadium filled with uh, young people high school, college, 20s, 20-something, 20 maybe some of them 30, but young, a young generation, uh, crying out to God, worshiping, passionate, on fire, just radically going after him. The, the roar was almost deafening in the place. And then the scene changed, and... All of these kids were in the parking lot going to their cars. And then when they got their vehicles, it changed again, and they were translated throughout the nation back to where they came from. And everywhere they went, they became balls of fire. And revival fire sprang up all over the nation. They took what they had in that stadium home. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I'm going to send a third great awakening to America. And it will begin with the young people, the young generation. It was in a season in my life when I was, um, I guess I would say I was beginning um, some of what I do today, but internally I was somewhat frustrated. Because this was early 90s, I watched as during the 80s what God had been doing in the 70s and early 80s, late 60s, the Jesus People Movement, the Charismatic Movement, the, just so much he was doing. I watched as it, I could tell in the spirit that the, the power and the momentum was just leaving. And when I finally was willing to acknowledge it's over, this movement is over. Not what God is doing is finished. I had no um, confusion about that. I knew that God wasn't finished with America, that he wasn't finished in the earth. But as a young man coming up in the kingdom, I was so excited to be a part of this revival. Uh, because I, I, I tasted of it. And it, it, it infected me. And as I watched it die, it was very troubling to me. So I've been asking the Lord, you know, what's, what are you going to do? What's next? I mean, you're not finished. I know you're not finished. What, 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 where do we go? And that's when he gave me this vision. And it planted a seed in me for revival. 
because I really didn't, I had no idea that it would be 30 years. I had no idea that he was, it was actually, he wasn't preparing me to launch into revival. He was preparing me for the life of a forerunner. One who would stir up prayer and, and persevere in, in keeping faith alive in people and helping, really, a part of my assignment, I feel, has been to help raise up a remnant of people who will stand in prayer that, you know, so that God could use them to do this. I had no idea that I was going to be like Abraham in a sense and have to wait 25 to 30 years. And I'm sure Abraham didn't know that either. But he, he made it so clear to me that when the times have been difficult in our nation and the delays and the waiting, that it was easy for me to just go in my prayer closet and say, hey guy, how about it? He's going to do this. And you know what I believe if you watch the post? America shall be saved. The third great awakening is coming. And it will not be stopped by any demonic strategy. It will not be stopped. Now, if there weren't people praying, it could be stopped. Because God, it's not, it's not a question of God's power. It's a question of him working through people. That's how he works on earth. But he does have a people that are, that are following him, honoring him, asking him, interceding. Uh, he, and he's been working in us to prepare us for it. So, uh, it is going to happen, and it's not going to be stopped. And I'm telling you the story, and I'm leading up to this teaching by saying to you, even though I've known for, I don't know, two, three years that we were in an early sort of hidden phase of this, it's like the baby in the womb thing, you know. Outwardly, you can't, you can't see it yet. It's not really happening yet, but something had happened in the spirit that, let me know, okay, we just shifted and now this has begun in its infancy stage. And if we continue to do what we're supposed to be doing, it's going to come into fullness. And I'm sharing all this because I believe we're at the point where it's coming into fullness. And I believe I'm here because God is positioning this house, this people, and probably not just this house, probably others in this region. He is positioning you for what he is about to do. And what he is about to do is, even though we, we, know, we know that God does great things, we've heard reports of revivals in the past, and, and we watch the movie and we read the books, but it still will be It'll be different when we experience it. This is going to be a profound, amazing and profound outpouring of the Holy Spirit. What he is about to do is going to be very radical and very strong. And it will be messy. It will. 